Yo, welcome back. This is Stu42 with another Minecraft video. Last time I did a quick rundown of my tools, bit of a filler episode, I'm sorry, but um, it's still something that uh, at least one of you wanted to see. Uh, this time I'm going to keep working on the, uh, the new base idea. So I thought I'd just go over what I do when I move and I'm going to do a couple of new things with this as well. So one of the problems I had with my last base is I have that lovely main power distribution board and it powers the farms downstairs. The problem that I ran into was one of the chunk loaders, one of the world anchors, ran out of ender pearls, which means that half my base was loaded and the other half wasn't. Now the half that was loaded was the half that was using the power, and the half that didn't load was the half that was producing the power. So I ended up getting back on and finding that I had no power for anything. That made it pretty hard because I didn't have any power to run the farms downstairs in order to make more fuel to run the generators to power the farms and it was just sort of endless loop so this time in, in the new base spot what i'm going to do is i'm going to make a renewable energy source just to run the uh the refineries and the industrial squeezes and fermenters that way if i ever run into an issue where the generators run out of fuel or everything stops for some reason the renewable power will actually be able to keep We'll kickstart that back into life uh, once the chunks are loaded again. So what I'm thinking of doing, and one of the things I'm actually going to do with my new base is I'm going to put a little tower thing here. That's going to be pretty cool. Uh, and then mostly sort of flat area. I'll terraform a bunch of this, but I'll, I'll do that off camera because I do kind of want this to be quite flat through here. Uh, but over the other side of the river here, I'm going to use the immersive engineering water wheels. Now, a couple of the other guys on the server have used the water wheels. They seem, you know, kind of cool. Um, nice and renewable anyway. So what I'm thinking is we'll have the water coming maybe down this way, flowing across and down. Oh, I'm going to fill all this in. So um, after I fill fill this in so yeah we'll probably yeah we fill it across here I can hopefully get back to that from the other side I don't really care at this point because you know we turned our last base into Swiss cheese pretty much uh, with all the mining and stuff we did underneath so this time we can do it a bit nicer it'll be a bit a bit more friendly on the uh, on the landscape uh, so what I'm gonna do is that this will be a spillway and we'll see how wide we can build this so I'm hoping to be able to have it look sort of natural so I might even make the water come down from up there like there's a natural spring or something um, it can flow down this way and then cut into here we'll cut in and go across and have these water wheels now in the uh, the magic immersive engineer engineers manual we have where are we generators not thermoelectric power generation so that is the windmill which we've made before we've made the um, the bigger windmill ah, water wheel fairly easy work Turning speed based on the water flowing, so you want to direct the water semicircle. Yep, so that's cool. We can do that. Uh, up to three water wheels can be placed against each other. Awesome. So we can do probably. What's that? We can have a dynamo thing there in one, two, three, and then a dynamo, and then one, two, three, and then a dynamo, and then one, two, three. So we can potentially. Ooh. We can potentially get quite a few in here, maybe nine of them even. All right, so as the sun sets on this particular Minecraft day, I'm gonna run away and do my famous disappearing act. I'll figure out what we're doing with this. I'll also make the water wheels. It's pretty easy. We just have treated wood planks. We've made them before. The water wheel segments, uh, what are they? Water wheel segments. Yeah, treated sticks, treated planks. Pretty easy with the creosote. We've made that a ton of times before. Uh, so yeah, I'll come back once I've hollowed out a bit of space because I really want to have at least some sort of basic power over here before we start trying to even move anything over. Power's, you know, pretty important at this stage. So I'll be back in a sec. See you in a bit. 
Alrighty, back for just a second. Just thought I would once again point out the pitfalls of this because you go into the engineer's manual, this looks like the fantastic recipe for this. Unfortunately, bzzzt, no, it is not. Once again, we're playing the hard mode, which means any eye has the correct recipe, twice as many water wheel segments, and this horrible iron shaft in the middle, which is a block of iron extruded. So we're gonna need nine of these. So yeah, pretty, pretty brutal indeed so nine uh, nine of these into the extruder and we'll finally get some water wheels uh, the other thing that we're also going to need is uh, we're going to need to do the dynamos that these things connect to so I'm gonna make those as well uh, now that we've got the pattern for the water wheel we need Yep, that thing, the kinetic dynamo. Uh, so I'll make a few of those. This is also the wrong pattern. Look at that, copper wire coil, iron ingots. Uh, the kinetic dynamo is actually electrum coil, bunch of steel, MV capacitor, slightly harder than the other one. Cool. Anyway, I'm gonna go and make all these. I will be back in just a second when we'll be back and put these water wheels in and see how we go. See you in a bit. Okie dokie, we are back and I have myself nine water wheels, three kinetic dynamos. Uh, I want to put these in place before we sort of muck around with the water too much. Uh, but what we're essentially trying to do is have the water come flowing over the edge here, down these three blocks, and then flow out this way. So I'm going to want to put my dynamo in here. Ta-da. And this one, I'm going to want to put there and this one there now with a bit of luck we should be able to hmm oh right okay <laughs> uh, yeah these wheels are a lot larger than I expected so we're gonna have to move stuff that's good actually that's good we, we want these things to be a bit bigger so Let's grab some of the dirt again. That means we're going to want to put it here. Interesting. It's just, yeah. Hmm. Maybe we need to put these on the other side. Right, so I can put it there, but I can't put it on the dynamo. Wow, how does that... Interesting. So these are get, ending up being... Oh, and now it's working. All right, cool. Maybe I was just in the way before. Oh, yeah. Awesome, cool. So now we need to do the same with this one. Move it out by one. So these are actually sort of more... More five by five sort of size that's that's pretty awesome though but I need to be standing yeah so that's a trick you kind of need to be standing straight on with it it doesn't doesn't seem to doesn't seem to work too well otherwise uh, let's grab stone for this one throw that in there yep cool and awesome now, because these are actually a little bit taller than I was expecting, we might be able to get away with... Yeah, we might be able to get away with changing this up a little bit. So, let's grab my bucket of water. Grab some water. Now, if we're going to put it, say, there. Now, we might need more... There. And here, nope, not turning. All right, I'm once again gonna have to run away and figure out what is going on with these. I may need to clear some more blocks out before we can get this going. Um, but I'll be back in just a moment once I've figured out how to get these things rolling. See you in a sec. Right, so it turns out we need a ton more room than I originally thought. It actually needs a seven by seven space. It does need the corner to be fully knocked out as well. So when you're doing this, we need 
well basically three each side so three for the side and three below so if we go out the other side it would be seven by seven so we can now put these wheels in place I've dug these out one level deeper and just move these out a little bit to get these in board on board uh, there we go and as you can see that one's already <clears throat> that one's already turning so let's go and grab some more water uh, we'll put it there actually what I should really do yes it's spinning that that's cool uh, what I should do is I should grab one water We'll we'll do this trick here. Get some infinite water happening. So I'll put that one back there. Another one there. Another one there. Another one there. And one in the middle to make it look pretty. Is that going to turn? Yes, yes, it is going to turn. Cool. So that flows well enough for there, flows well enough for there. We can now go down here. Now, this is needing a bit of a bit of love down this end to uh, to trim out some of the space, just so that it flows nicely. So we can do that. We can do that. And that should flow a bit better. We might just want to put that in there. And that in there and then so it's always a bit of a tricky thing trying to get water to flow where you want it to flow because it'll all naturally go down that way rather than out straight but that's okay oh why is it doing that you might need to just oh, that's annoying There we go. Break them in the right order, and there we go. Cool. So now we have that flowing down, that flowing down, and we have all nine water wheels running. This looks a little bit stupid down here. We might just need to do the same sort of trick. Okay, we're going to need to. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> this is quite annoying. Is that going to get over there? There we go. Cool. So now we can gradually cut this back, and it'll. Oh, that's a bit low. Put that in there. Put that out there. Awesome. Now normally water's a mess, but that's actually looking pretty decent. We do just want oh. there we go. Cool. So now we have all that running. Now I'm gonna tidy this up for next time so that the water sort of comes more out of here. I mean I can probably do this now if I just sort of you know throw some water up there. That might actually yeah, it looks kind of cool. And then I can just go down here and keep grabbing more. And throw some more there. No, it's still not quite getting out there. Uh, maybe. Maybe in there. You get the idea anyway. This is pretty, uh, pretty easy sort of stuff to, to do. Yeah, cool. We can. I'll sort this out anyway off camera. All right, I think that's going to be a good place for me to end this episode. I know I haven't looked this up yet, but I sort of done that in other episodes, and you guys now know how this works. Now we just need to put the uh, the immersive engineering caps on these, so that uh, the uh, just the wire connectors, uh, probably using the 
Uh, probably do the MV ones for this. Uh, more than enough. They'll carry more than enough power. Just the MV is a lot better at uh, not losing as much um, signal across the distance than the than the LV one. We could always go HV if we wanted. HV is just a little bit harder to wire up because you need to use the glass. Uh, the HV wire relays in between. Yeah, maybe I could use that. It's different, uh, different lengths and different things. But I'll have that done for the next episode. We'll have that wired across this gap, uh, and maybe just a little, little substation over here with a little bit of a capacitor in it, uh, just to see how much power we're actually generating from these. But that for now is a good start to getting power over here at the new base location, and it's another good new renewable source of energy for our refineries and stuff. So that's it from me for this time. As always, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time.